Hi guys. How you doing? So I'm here. <laughs> I am waiting. I don't know if I'm going to get, but I'm waiting for a call back from the garage. I called twice, no answer. Left a message. Um, but it's one guy and he works on his own and he doesn't have a receptionist or anybody else to answer his phone or anything. So, you know, if he's driving or whatever, he can't answer his phone. So you've got to be patient. But I want my damn car back. Anyway, hopefully he'll call. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. There's still potentially time to get my car back today but it's not looking promising. I promised you a bullet journal update so I thought I'd do a quick bullet journal and planner and junk journal update just so you can see where I'm up to so far. Um, my word for the year is unify and as part of that I started doing everything in one journal again. Uh, well, not started. I've been doing it a lot last year as well. But I continued doing everything in one journal with just, you know, my bullet journal pages plain, no decoration, nothing, just bullet journal pages. And then everything else was my journal, my regular journal. While I was in an ordinary book, that worked fantastic because I could flip through and straight away I could see what was bullet journal and what wasn't bullet journal and what was journaling and I knew exactly where everything was. Since I've been doing junk journaling it's a bit trickier because the pages aren't even <laughs> um, and I don't know where to where I'm going to need junk bullet journal pages in order to put blank pages where I think I'm going to need them. It got very confusing so I thought this month maybe I would just not stitch my book together and put my bullet journal pages in as I need them. That problem then is that you end up with a lot of spare pages at the back. You know, how do you know when you're halfway through your book when you don't journal chronologically? It's very difficult. Anyway, I have a solution. So first off, here is what January and February are looking like so far. It's not sewn in, these are still loose because that's part of what we're doing in class. I'm showing people how to sew this in uh, to make it a, a book that will lie flat. Um, and once it's sewn in, which hopefully we'll be doing this week, so hopefully next Friday you'll get a full flip. So I will do a proper flip and it won't be a live flip, it will be a, a proper flip through pre-recorded without all the waffle because I do waffle a bit <laughs> but yeah that's what it's looking like I'm very happy with it I think it looks cool very nice yes January February not quite done I've still got some February stuff to do uh, so I shall do that before I need to uh, sew it together This is my Ravenclaw Traveller's Notebook. At the moment, it's looking very skinny. <laughs> but as you can imagine, during the month, it gets quite large. So I liked the idea of keeping the, the book itself loose. Because what I found the last, like February and January, January, as you know, I had the book was already made and I added into it. February, I took the book apart and added into it and then restitched it. What I found was I ended up taking a lot of pages out of February because there was too much of what I didn't want and not enough of what I did. So this month I've put in a little bit more that I can write over and a little less decoration and I'm going to decorate as I go so kind of a partly February it's already set up but I'm also going to decorate as I go like I did with January so kind of a hybrid I'm hoping this is the the way forward for it to go 
um, because I don't I don't want to create my book in advance and then just write in my book. All I've got to do for the month is write in my book or sketch in my book or stick photos in my book. That doesn't interest me. It's the fiddling around with bits that interests me. So I've just got the papers. I've prepared some stuff that goes with the theme and that's what we're going to do. So March is green. January was blue. February was kind of orangey reds. Um, green for March and it's a Victorian theme because the, the guys in my class wanted to do vintage Victorian but I don't do shabby chic type of Victorian beige and pink flower type stuff so in class we're doing steampunk and for this I'm doing Victorian Penny Dreadful uh, so it's going to have some science and some horror type bits and a bit of literature. Uh, when I say Penny Dreadful, I mean the TV show, not the magazines. I will probably do the magazines at some point as well. So in front of my book here, I've just got some lace and paper, uh, material offcuts and stuff so that they're ready to go. They're in my journal already because I know that I want to use those. I've also got some offcuts of paper. And something I've added this month is a pocket in the front that is going to be my uh, ongoing March stuff. The idea being that I can take this out and clip it to whatever page I need it for on the day and then I can put it back in here until I need it again, if that makes sense. Um, because there's stuff that you need to know about during the month that... you want reminding of on that page but you don't have to keep writing it out again so this is kind of my tasks list for the month where it'll remind me you know at some point this month I need to pay for my car if I ever get it back uh, and that's just going to sit in the front here it's just this is just a A5 Filofax March divider and I folded it in half and I'm just going to pop it in there like that so that I've got a, a thing in the front. Actually, no, it's going in there with my calendar. Um, so I've got my March calendar of events because I like to have that in every book. Uh, even if I photocopy it and stick it in, I like to have I like to be able to quick reference stuff. I just have to. And I have to have my appointments calendar. I don't want to be rummaging around changing books and, and all that kind of stuff. I'd rather write things out twice than have to keep going and fetching a different book. It drives me insane. Uh, so this is my book for the month. I've got, this is actually, you probably recognise this if you've got Jane Davenport's scrap paper pad. She's actually on pink. Um, now, don't do this and think you can get away with selling it or reproducing it or putting it in books for selling or anything like that because it's against copyright. But for my own purposes, I'm never ever going to use that piece of paper with pink on it. Um, however, I did buy the piece of paper. So I scanned it and I took out the pink in the background and I reprinted her on green. Um, so I'm using the image, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, selling the image or reproducing it for other people or anything like that it's just for me because I really wanted this image but pink doesn't work with my colour scheme sorry Jane uh got a photograph here this is some uh horror type sketches it's a, a two I don't know if it's a mother and a child or a, an older child and a younger child uh sitting in bed looking like they can hear something going on bit creepy. It reminded me of the two sisters in uh, um, Penny Dreadful anyway. Hey guys. Moons and Astrology. So this is my where I put in my Moons and Astrology stuff for the month and I've got an extra page there that I can just add bits to or I can decorate it, whatever. I've Throughout the journal I've clipped in. So this is not stuck in yet, it's just clipped in. Because it depends if I need all that space or not, depending on how much I need to write. I may not have room for him. I may need to use this or I may not. I may need to add more pages to this and turn it into a little booklet. 
this might be more than enough room or I might need to use this whole page but this will be free and I can stick him on there so I'd, he's there but he doesn't have to be he's not pre-decorated is what I'm saying I've got some these white pages are from my uh, sea white sketchbooks that I use these coloured pages are I don't think I've got any scrapbook paper in these these are all printed shush these are all printed on 120 GSM paper double sided full page borderless prints and all the free printables are from Pixabay I love Pixabay you go on, you find pages that you want. And what I do is when, whenever I've used more than a couple of images from an artist, I buy them a coffee. All the images are free for commercial use, everything. They're just, you know, nerds like us who like to make fun stuff and put them on Pixabay for other people to use and share them. Uh, but if I use more than one or two pictures from a particular artist, I always buy them a coffee for their efforts. It's all linked in the description. You just go and click it. So I've actually used this page now in every single journal I've used this year because I love this page. So this artist needs a coffee. <laughs> so uh, anything like this where it's faded, this was actually a really bright picture in the first place. So what I do is I drop the opacity to 50%, put a white background behind it and then print it as a draft. And then it comes out this nice muted colours in the background. So even her, I could write over her because I always write in black fountain pen. So I've got some black paper. I thought it'd be interesting to try some white ink for a change. Some little bits and pieces that I can use throughout the journal. This is a... I wasn't going to put this in, but it's... I don't know if you can see that, but it's called Hark Hark the Dogs Do Bark. Uh, I think it's like a Victorian musical type song. I'm not sure. But it follows my Be More Dog theme that I've been putting in all my journals. So some nice blank pages. And I left a blank page that's a double page in case I want to do a double sketch. It's easier to cover over a white page than it is to create a white page if you want to draw on it. I've made a couple of little bits and pieces like this. It's just a very simple little, you know, journal card, whatever I can just add bits to or, you know, if I don't use it, I can always put it in my ephemera box and use it another journal. Whoops. Again, these are printed from Pixabay. That's actually from a, a book and I've just several of these images I've taken from a, a book that I use for pulling things out of. I've got some uh, dictionary paper. Now, these ones were actually from the Graphics Fairy. These are really good ones. And it's got um, mesmerism and mesmerise and all that kind of stuff on one side. So I made it a little pocket with a flap. And uh, I've put a tag in. But none of it's closed up. None of it's decorated. None of it's closed up. I could stick this down I can turn this into a pocket I could stick the whole thing down take that out and just leave it like that I could have it as a, a pocket and a journal flap so I could put plain paper under here I, I've got plenty of room to add or take away depending on what I want this is a beautiful um, lace design mandala again Pixabay also Pixabay these pages, I didn't want to cut them at the edges because this isn't A5, it's A5 narrow. I didn't want to cut them at the edges, so instead I folded them in half and cut them in half, uh, cut the edge off. Mm, how do I explain it? I folded them in half that way and I cut off here instead of off the edge, so I didn't lose the roses. And then I used that sliver. I don't know if you can see it because it actually does blend in really well, but just here there's like a, a gully that's a V shape and then I stuck the pages back onto it, if that makes sense. I've got an, Again, just a, I like the, the colour on the front of this, but I didn't like the inside much, so I just folded it in half and I can use it as a pocket or a card or 
whatever as I get there. And also, because this isn't stitched together, I can take this out and I can stitch on it. I can put it through my sewing machine and stuff like that if I want to. So that I think will be a lot better because I got quite frustrated last month that I couldn't take things out. Um, and work on them on my sewing machine. You can imagine how hard it is to get something like that through a sewing machine when you've got all this to work with. So I think not stitching it together will be a bonus. It also means I can move pages around. So if I get to here and I decide, you know what, actually today I want to sketch again, I can always bump this page back and use this page, pull this page forward, rather than ending up moving forward three pages and then having to go back and move forward and go back and you know I'm just trying to make it easier basically more white paper this is the difference between my Victorian I think and a lot of when people say they're doing Victorian style and they go for this shabby chic ink all the edges you know um death by vintage photo kind of stuff it is March, yeah, this is the one for March. It's March today. I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a ink everything to death kind of guy. I mean, I do like inked edges, but if I was gonna ink something like this, I wouldn't wanna put ink vintage photo around all of it. I would rather ink this bit in green or ink both pages in gold or something like that. Yeah, well, it's kind of spring-like. I really wanted something a bit more uplifting. <laughs> uh, I'm quite happy to use black during the summer because it's nice and sunny. But, no, I needed some spring. I need some colour. Oh, it's my dad's birthday today, so I never forget that it's a, February's a short month and March springs up on you really fast. Uh, this is actually uh, another piece from Pixabay, but it was yellow and brown. The original colour is completely different. The original colour is... Oh, let me find it. Hang on. That's fine. My steampunk one for April. This is the original colour, and I just threw it into GIMP, which is free version of Photoshop, basically. Um, and just tweaked the colour settings, changed the colour hue to green instead of yellow and then printed it out. Again, printed out draft because if you print it out draft it's not so vivid and you can just write over it. Some more from this um, New York book. I took out bits that looked Victorian-ish. Um, that, surprisingly, it doesn't look Victorian, but everything in that photo, you know, the those houses and everything, that is all Victorian. But it doesn't look Victorian. It's a bit strange, so I don't know. Might have to tweak that a bit. This is the other piece of this one. This was originally a full A4 page. There it is. So this bit was there and it was a full A4 page, but I liked the way you could break it there and have the, this bit and this bit. So I thought this would be a nice centerpiece. It's uh, London Bridge in the Victorian era. So I thought that was appropriate for my Penny Dreadful. Um, there'd probably be quite a lot of, well, not quite a lot, but several London images that will end up in here because it's very London centric, obviously. And then we're on to the back half. Again, this is the... I'm obsessed with these lights. I don't know why. I don't even know if these are Victorian, but I'm obsessed with them. Look, look at these. Aren't they beautiful? How gorgeous is that? <laughs> this is um, from a magazine. A picture from a magazine. I don't know who the, art who the photographer is or if it's digital art or what it is. I don't know. It came out of a magazine. green again. Uh, oh yeah, so this bit, I just popped some cards in that bit that to, you know, could use that as a, again, tip-ins, extenders. There's 
million and one ideas you could do with these pockets. You could put that on there as a tip in. You could use it as decoration. You could make a... The lamps feel special. Yeah, they evoke emotion. I don't know what it is. Exactly, Amber. Yes. And they always remind me of Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Maybe it's the true crime thing. I don't know. But yeah, it just... They always give me this feeling. It's not quite nostalgia. It's... I don't even know. I don't even know what, what feeling it is they evoke in me, but they just, I like it. Whatever it is, I like it. Vintage pocket watches do it too. Melancholy, yes. S kind of, I don't know, those lamps, because they remind me of Jack the Ripper, they always make me think Victorian, dark, gothic, Somber, foggy, melancholy, nostalgia type. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because I'm a goth. I think that's all it is. I'm a goth and I like weird gothic things. As I was saying. Um, what else could you do? You could make that a tip in or a flip. Uh, you could add paper to it to make it like a concertina. You could just write on the back and stick it in the pocket. You could cut it so that it extends the pocket. You could fold the pocket down and have it sticking out the pocket that way. You could turn it into a decorated bookmark and clip it on the front. You could take it off the pocket entirely and stick it over here. <laughs> Perhaps take off this corner and put the corner there. So you've got the green and the green and put it on there or stick it in the pocket or whatever. 101 different ways of doing. I'll have to come up with, I'll have to get loads of these and loads of them and put them together in a little book and have a huge, like, here's one and this is what I'm doing with this one and this is what I'm going to do with this one and here's this one. <laughs> Just like 101 different things to do with a pocket and a journaling card. That sounds quite fun, actually. Uh, this is oh, this is from the Steampunk Forty Five uh, graphic graphic Forty Five Steampunk spells. Uh, there wasn't an awful lot in there that I thought actually went with this theme, but the pocket watches and the crazy science eyes and the and the guy from Forrest Gump, but instead of shrimp, it's paper. I've never seen Forrest Gump. I don't know why, because I absolutely adore Tom Hanks, but I've never seen Boris Gump. I know he starts running one day and doesn't stop <laughs> till he's bored. And then he says, right, I'm going home now. It kind of strikes me as one of those films where there's the trailer and then for the actual film, there's just lots of space in between. But if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the film. And the trailer's quicker to watch. Uh, yeah, I kind of... There's a couple of, like, Frankenstein-y type bits that I thought would go with the... with that part of the theme. I'm going to try and include some uh, gothic literature in here, uh, but only where it's applicable to Penny Dreadful, because there was lots of uh, different references to literature, like... Frankenstein is the obvious one, but there were quite a few others and I might try and sneak those in. So this one is the one about mesmerism and everything. I did the same with this, but on this side I did a little envelope. So I could actually add, um, like I could add a piece on there and turn that into an actual envelope and put something in it. Or I could add white paper to that or lined paper or whatever and turn it into a journal spot. I could decorate this so that it's got a fold down so it doesn't look like there's a journaling spot and this is actually a hinge and it lifts up. Lots and lots of things. Lots and lots of things. I can't wait to play with these. Oh, I got excited then. I got a message on my phone, but it's it's not from the, the garage. It's my energy meter saying, 
you need to top up in two days. I'm like, great, why do you need to tell me that now? <laughs> do I need to do it now? No. Well, then why are you telling me? I'll have forgotten by tonight. Another double page spread. So, again, if I want to do a bigger sketch, I can. If I don't, I can always cover it. That's not a problem. Uh, the black paper. This is the other side of the Victorian lady that's on the front with this bit. Uh, and I didn't want to cut this bit off so I thought I'd just leave it as a flap again I can journal all on that or I can fold it in and make it a tuck spot or I can stick it down and journal on this I can do all sorts of things with that uh, I could even stick I could stick photos on it like that so the photos kind of lift up and then you've got something underneath it I love playing with these little hidden bits and pieces and creating them and making them as I go along and I think that's why I enjoyed January so much because I was really exploring and seeing what I could shove in there but then I needed to be able to have different backgrounds and I couldn't do that in a pre-bound book uh, but then when I did the February backgrounds there was too many so I went a bit overboard this is much more subtle this month and I can add to it then Another picture of uh, London Bridge. I think it's actually the same picture, but it's it's drawn in a different way. Oh no, it's a continuation. Sorry, it's the other part of that. It's the other part of that A4 sheet. Another of those lamps. I just had that hanging around. I thought I'd stick it on there. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of postcards like this. That are, again, this is Pixabay. You know, people take these beautiful images and just throw them on Pixabay. So, yeah, just use them. I don't care. So, again, this is all clipped. So I can use it as decoration or a pocket or whatever. Let's put it that way so I remember that it's there. Uh, I've got a watercolour and ink sketch of Big Ben that I printed on acetate. I've got some more bits of fabric, offcuts, bits of, I kept the, the bits of, um, oh, words. I kept all the bits of dictionary paper that I pulled, that I cut off so that I could use them later in the, the book because this half of the book has got three extra pages that are white that the front half of the book doesn't have, which is my calendars and my astrology uh, sorry five extra pages my two three calendar pages and two astrology pages so there's extra pages in the back of the book the other half of the black and white photo the good thing about having the extra white pages at the back is that I found it really easy to be able to just say okay I'm going to chop that page off and stick a bit of washi tape and pretend that page was never there and then I use this for something else because it's good sketch paper so this never goes to waste in fact in one of these I've actually stuck two pieces that I'd done that with in February I pulled them out and I stuck them with a bit of washi tape down the middle and put them back in the next one I think they're in the next section again off cuts of papers where I've cut it off um, this is a part of the triptych that I did for my Filofax and I reprinted this image because it was the dogs that made me go to this image. I just love the, uh, the this, this all these beautifully quaffed uh, Victorian ladies in all their finery having their tea, you know, and uh, in the front there's this, this dog with his snout up his bum. <laughs> just made me laugh. Be more dog! <laughs> Metaphorical, symbolic, not literally talking stick your nose up your bum. Although if you can stick your nose up your bum, the media will probably be quite impressed and want to hear from you. Uh, I've got these funny plague guys. <laughs> they make me laugh. <laughs> they look like people who turned up having been told it was a costume party. You know, like in Bridget Jones. 
where they turn up for the Vickers and Tarts party and they're actually dressed as Vickers and Tarts and nobody bothered to tell them that the, the, can the costumes were cancelled. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's weird, the connections my brain makes, I tell you. This is the other half of that lovely rose paper at the front. Again, much plainer on this side, so I left the plain piece. I can always cut this off and use it further up in the journal or fold it in or whatever, but it's harder to add things in. The masks are bonkers. Yeah, they are. I love them. Absolutely love plague masks. They're hilarious. They remind me of... I don't even know why. You know Dumbo? The crazy crows and one of them doesn't have a beak he's got a beak that's like a mask and he's got it tied on he's like he's pretending to be a crow <laughs> that's what it's like anyway um i've got some pictures i printed out here that are uh, like that's from the show but i haven't printed anything I think I've got like one or two that are obviously from Penny Dreadful. I've got the picture of, you know, that beautiful picture of Vanessa Ives with her necklace, her black necklace and her scorpion. Um, I've taken a section of that and printed it, but you can't see all of her. It's just a section of the necklace. So all of the pictures I've done are very nondescript, but I think they fit the theme. So I've got this books and an abacus and a quill and stuff a very old kind of gothic dracula type picture because obviously dracula's in uh, the one i haven't done yet is dorian gray I, I need to find something that fits dorian gray but i think i've got something for everything else it's a beautiful picture Again, that was on Pixabay as a blue picture, um, and I've already used it in blue, but I just printed it out in black and white instead. This is the only colour image I've got so far, but I may not even keep it as colour. I don't know, but it reminds me of the sister. I've got the black and white of the rose. It's got crossbones, obviously. There we go. So it's obviously her, but it's more about the scorpion. Um... I wish I had a scorpion stamp because I would be stamping scorpions all over the place. Uh, and then I found these, which are... I don't know if I'm going to use these in this one or in the other one. So I've got a big spider and a, a skull. So I printed these out in the brown because they will fit. They will fit in here with the green. But they can also go in my Victorian steampunk one for next month if I don't use them in here. Uh, printed out a picture of a an ornate staircase and I know where that's from but I can't think of it is it my secret garden where there's the the little girl and the kid who's made to think that he's an invalid and he can't walk and everything and she gets him out in a wheelchair in the garden and his dad comes home and he's he can walk yay that's the staircase. It's used in so many different films and I think it's in Penny Dreadful as well. But yeah, I thought I'd use that. And then I've got another... Oh look! Another lamp on London Bridge. <laughs> A bit freaked out from watching Dorian Gray. Oh, I love Dorian Gray. Probably shouldn't have watched it in the middle of the night. Well, yeah, horror films in the middle of the night is not the greatest idea, although I do it all the time. Um, which version did you watch, though? I like the one with Ben Barnes. New one, I've got to say. Show. 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 Oh, sorry, Penny Dreadful. That's the theme of this. It's Penny Dreadful, the show, the TV show. It's awesome, Diana. Fantastic. Gothic, weirdy Frankenstein and Dracula and... and... It was the Ben Barnes one. Yeah, I love that one. I love Ben Barnes, though. 
So yeah, I've got that. I've also found this bit of paper that I believe came out of a flow magazine. Again, that fits my colour scheme. I've got these, which are chalk things that you write on with chalk markers and it wipes off, but you can also write on it with acrylic paint and it'll stay. So I thought those would be kind of cool. I do have ones that are like, like these. I don't know if I'll use these because they're a bit too witchy. I might use that one. I might use that one or that one, but I won't use all of them. Uh, but I think these might work better, actually. And then I've also got this, which is... Use a skeleton's cameo charm. You mean these? I could use the skeleton cameo charms, except that they're my earrings. I turn them into earrings. They are perfect. But I turned them into earrings, so no, I'm not going to be using them in my Penny Dreadful book. But yes, they would work. Did you not see that I turned them into earrings? I've worn them several times, I'm sure I told you. I'm sure I told you. Oh, I've dropped one now. I've worn them several times. I like them because they're not very heavy. Anyway, this is... Um, I don't know where these come from. They are the CDs. Seedstamps.com by Sugarloaf Products. Uh, but they're such cool stamps. I mean, obviously the, the front decoration is watercolored, but all of these, I could use all of these and just slightly tweak them I mean, like this one, if I did hurt the dress in green. Or, you know, I'm sure I could do something with this to make it look a bit more Penny Dreadfulish. Maybe do black lacing over the top. Um, and they're a good size. They're a, they're a decent size. Like the teacup and the... <coughs> excuse me, my voice is going. The teacup and saucer... I tried out yesterday and they're a really good size. Um, the stamps are a little bit warped, so you have to, they print around the outside, but then you have to push down in the middle to get them to stamp properly. So I need to play with them to get them to work right. Uh, but yeah, they're cool. I like them. Stamp them, then sketch something creepy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like I could do the book. But I could have a spider on it or something. Or So yeah, I think that'd be really cool. And it's got like a medical bag and all sorts, which fits with the Frankenstein thing. Sketch a plague mask on the woman. <laughs> that would be funny. I could probably turn that heart into a plague mask, actually. No, I know you need to use an acrylic block, but I, if you use an acrylic block, they're too convex in the middle. They don't stamp properly because you have to push them down in the middle. The idea is that you stick them on these. What is it about things that have got a 50-50 chance of opening the right way? You always get it wrong the first time. It's like USB plugs. You have to turn them around twice before they're the right way round. The idea is that you stick them on here and then when you use them on the as a stamp you put them on here and you do that and then you can push them down in the middle so that they stamp properly the whole the point is that they're you're supposed to be able to do it all using the cd block if you put them on a flat block they don't stamp in the middle properly whereas if you do it this way you can push down in the middle which is both quite annoying and also really ingenious <laughs> So that's, that's my journal. You've seen me journal before, you know my journal. Okay. Up until I said at the beginning that the bullet journal, you know, I've been doing the, the basic bullet journal. I read the bullet journal method. I went, aha, it's not a planner, it's a journal. 
duh. And I've been doing a lot better with it ever since. And I've had it in these books. So, you know, there's my calendar of events. I always have a appointments calendar as well. I just find that layout easier to read. Uh, but then I also have pages, um, you know, anything that's decorated is not a bullet journal page. So straight away I can, oh, oh, there we go, there's a bullet journal page. And, oh, there's a bullet journal page. You know, it's really easy to find stuff that is bullet journaling because it's not decorated. But the more I've gone through, it's really hard to find pages in this lot. You literally have to go through page by page and it's a bit annoying. Plus, there's the fact that I expected to have like four months worth in one of these books and I'm only going to fit two months in each book. So I'm going to be flipping backwards and forwards between books. And despite the fact that, you know, word of the year, unify, put it all in one book, you'll be able to find it all. That makes sense, right? until you realise that you're using stuff that you wrote in January because you had an idea, but then you're not doing the video until April. And you're like, ah, hang on a minute. <laughs> if I keep doing this, by the time I get to July, I could be ferreting around looking for February's book. Yeah, so um, I've unified my bullet journal. <laughs> I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. Uh, but I've been keeping this as a backup. And I think if I hadn't been keeping it as a backup, I probably wouldn't have bothered. I would have dealt with the inconvenience of having to keep going backwards and forwards and looking in different books. Uh, but because I kept this separate, because I've done this before. I've done this before, right? I did it everything in one book. And then, no, I can't find my planner pages. So I put my planner separate, and my journal separate. And then I'm like, no, I want to be able to carry them all together. So I put them all together. And then that doesn't work, so I pull them apart. It's a regular cycle. But I had this because this is one of those, you know, the big chunky Believe journals. Do you remember last year I took the small one, the B6, and I chopped it in half to show you how to make a thick book into two, like a really super chunky book, into two thinner books. Um, the big journal originally would have been too chunky too heavy to use um although it, they are quite light i mean they're not super heavy part of me wishes i'd kept it as a full journal so i would just have one big thick chunky journal but on the other hand this is a good size uh, we've never quite got what we want have we <laughs> anyway this is what this is looking like i uh, if you don't, if you don't remember the video, actually I redid this with the skull tape originally, but then I'm on a bit of an Alice in Wonderland kick, and you know I love my Halloween, and I've got Halloween in Wonderland, so I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I'll do a bit of Mad Hatter's tea party. Why not? So I've got the Mad Hatter on the back, and Halloween on front. I don't know if I'm going to put a, a closure on this yet. So far, it's working without the closure. It actually stays closed very well. So I might not bother. But if I do, I will almost certainly do a Midori-style closure through the back and just flip it over. Uh, because on journals, I do like that kind. And the width of this is almost the same as the diagonal. So I won't have to stretch my elastic stupidly. This is undecorated. Not pretty planning. I have a couple of bits, but only to make it an interesting looking book, nothing else. So I needed a pocket to put my calendar in and put any extra notes in. So I used this, uh, again, this is from Halloween, Graphic 45, Halloween in Wonderland. Uh, the White Rabbit, keep your appointments. A man who carries a Juba Hampton pocket watch can meet his appointments on the minute. Never be late again. Accurate to the second. <laughs> Just looks really funny. It appeals to my sense of humour. Uh, in here I've got... This is a, one of those Filofax dividers that I chopped up. 
uh, and I just turned it into a little flip so that I could put my my January uh, my monthly calendars in because I like these calendars and I like not having to print them out or not having to write them out all the time and then in here I've got like a couple of little pockets that I can put little bits in Uh, then I've got space for my index. I'm still torn on indexes. I struggle with indexes. So we'll skip that, but I've left a few pages for an index. Uh, urban sketches. This is my forward planning. So I've got urban sketches appointments and other stuff. I estimate that this book will last me till at least June. So about half the year. So that should be enough. And then this is what I do with the, the calendar pages. Just write, stick them in there and write on them. This is the same information that's in my other book. But I like to have it all in one book. In, in every book. I always have all the information everywhere. Because it just drives me insane having to go and keep swapping books all the time. Just to look up when the full moon is, you know. And I don't have that kind of memory. I can't remember when the full moon is. <laughs> uh, then I've got my January tasks. And I also started this month, I've put my work in progress. I didn't have any work in progress in January because I'd taken time off for, um, dis for Christmas. So I, I had finished everything. And then this is my, this is my bullet journal. This is it. So those are daily logs or rapid logs or whatever. Uh, YouTube lists the class setups I'm doing on my uh, website bullet journal when frogs sing 2019 January to April working out what classes we're going to do notes on my unify thing more daily logs idea book I think what I'm likely to do is I think the most likely thing to do for my index, because I don't really need to know when my my daily logs are. I don't see the point in writing that down. I might put like January page two to 19. Then I know if I want a January daily page, it's going to be between two and 19. Uh, and then only write down ones that are important like these are my youtube ones um my class setups because i'm going to be going back to these all the way through the book i mean these class setups are ongoing this youtube list is ongoing that one will go in that one will go in this one won't need to And then I realised I was not heading my pages and that actually made a lot of difference. So you'll notice always with my, my non-daily logs, I always put a header. But then for my daily logs, I just start with a date and it's not, I don't know why it's different, but it's different. It's not a, a header. I don't know. It should be a header, but it's not in my brain so I started putting daily log at the top which I only I've read bullet journal method I've gone through the audiobook I think I'm on my fourth go round and I've been going through my uh the actual textbook marking things off and revisiting things and rereading things and dropping in and out of stuff ever since I got it and I just noticed this week that he writes daily log at the top. And it's actually made a lot of difference. It's weird, but it's made a lot of difference. So I don't think I will add this page specifically, you know, daily log, page 14, daily log, page 15. I don't think I'll bother. But that book signature template, I'll put that in the index because that's something that's important. I will probably put quotes and then just have a list of pages where there's quotes on 
so that I can flick through and then when I'm looking for a quote for my journal I've got one ready so our stitch and witch project more daily logs YouTube Q&A's I've got to go through those and see which ones I've already answered some of them I haven't done yet and then we're on to February and I don't like a lot of decoration in my planners I never have I do like my stickers but I'm trying to avoid stickers because they don't stick to this paper very well and then they annoy me uh, but I have put um, just an edge I haven't done it on March yet but I've put an edge on the calendar page just so that when I'm looking at the side of the book I can go oh January February March April that's about here it, it's just enough it doesn't stick out or anything it's just enough that when I'm flipping through I'll be able to see you know when I'm looking for those pages I don't have to read page numbers hey Paula still figuring out bullet journaling dude I've been doing something akin to bullet journaling not actual bullet journaling the way it's described but I have kept lists of stuff in notebooks using bullet points since I was a kid. I've kept, I've been bullet journaling in the basic format before the book came out when I just had seen his videos. For Since the videos came out in 2013. I adapted to the new one in 2016, I think it was. I'm now reading the book. I'm on my fourth go through and I'm still learning stuff about bullet journaling. Even now, I don't think you ever stop learning about bullet journaling because it's so adaptable and because you're always changing and your situation is always changing. You're constantly looking for your planner to be something new. And that I think that might be why so many people have planxiety, as they call it, you know, where, where you constantly changing planners, constantly doing this, constantly changing to this system or that system or something else. I use the same system all the time, but my system is adaptable. And my system, when I originally started, was so adaptable that I simply, I took my system and I took the bullet journal system and went, ha ha, that works. <laughs> and I've been doing the two together ever since. And now you can't tell which is mine and which is his. So, yeah, it's because it's constantly changing. You don't do bullet journaling. It's... It, Honestly, it's easier than it looks. All the... It is a way of planning, but it's also a way of remembering things and knowing where everything is. And it's more like cataloguing, honestly, than either journaling or planning. I think he just calls it a journal because it's a daily thing. And it includes things that he has to do. But it's not just a journal and it's not just a planner and it's not just an idea book and it's not just a commonplace book. It's all sorts of stuff mixed into one thing. Um, but because it's all in one place, it's easy to find. So like, if I find a really good quote, I used to just write it in my journal. But then nine times out of ten, I'd be annoyed about where I'd put it because I'd just scribbled it in somewhere. And not really thought about where I wanted to put the quote or how I wanted to use it. So I'd start putting things on post-it notes and then start losing them. Yeah, journal is more personal information and memories. But this has to-do lists as well. But it's not just to-do lists, which is why it's not just a planner. It's more of a, rec a daily record, if anything. It's more like a pocketbook than anything else. But... I really like it. It's like this calendar. This calendar is not about what you have to do. It's keeping a record of what has happened, which is an entirely different thing. But it's not a journal either. It's, yeah. Read the book, is what I say. Uh, if you're not a member of uh, Audible, you can go on Audible and get a free download, and it's one of the free downloads that they offer. Top tip. Uh, forgot to write daily log on those that's there for a reason because I haven't I, I hadn't finished yeah there was something else I needed to write in there same as in here there's something else I need to transfer from that book 
because I was part way through transferring it. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do this properly. That's the thing. An A5 is too big for me, but the pocket ones, if I used a pocket one, I'd go through it in, in, a, in a month because I've got, I used to have the tiniest writing in the world and a, a pocket moleskin would last me six months. But since my shoulder injury and I'm having to write bigger, my writing just, I mean, I can barely fit six words to a line these days. So a pocket moleskin is half a B6. It's just not big enough. But an A5 is too big. I don't like A5. I like moleskin size. But a moleskin is also too big. So, uh, so I went for B6, but really thick. It's got 150 pages in it. Uh, and then we're on to March. And like I say, no decoration, no nothing. There's no stickers because they don't stick to this paper. Um, I mean, I could stick them down with glue, but who can be bothered with that with stickers, right? The whole point of using stickers is that they stick. If stickers don't stick, what's the point of using them? Uh, but I will probably, because when I go out, and the, the weird thing is I haven't left, I haven't, I've hardly left the house since Christmas because I'm carless at the moment. So getting out and about is not the easiest thing to do right now. I can't just pop out to a coffee shop for a coffee and sit and work in my journal or whatever like I normally do. And even if I did, I'm not sure that I want to be carting around one of these to work in because it would draw too much attention. I like to be able to just sit in a corner and doodle or sketch or write or whatever and you know I don't have to necessarily have my journal with me um I think what would be better is if I cut up a few pieces of paper like like maybe this you know cut this up into sizes of paper maybe even you know just fold it in half and shove it in the front of the book so if I want to journal, I've got journal paper, but primarily I've got a planner with me. Because um, when I sketch, I normally sketch on white paper with a ballpoint pen. And guess what? I've got white paper, ballpoint pen. So I can actually sketch in here when I'm out and about. If I want to just sit and sketch the dogs playing in the park or whatever, I can just sketch in here. It's fine. Because I can always scan it and reprint it for my journal. So, ugh, why does it have to be so complicated? <laughs> I don't, and I don't, I, my brain is struggling with the logic of I need to things to feel unified. That is what I'm trying to achieve this year is unifying everything. But in order to unify it, I need to split it out into two separate things. And my brain's like, what? <laughs> Oh, anyway, yeah, I do kind of regret chopping this in half because it, it's so light. I mean, there's no weight to this paper whatsoever. It's completely, completely weightless, actually. Everyone likes different sizes, yeah. My favourite size for journaling is the A5 slim which is the moleskin large size and i haven't changed out of the moleskin large size for oof, years and every time i do venture out into a different book because maybe i'm sent a book to review or something like that i always go back to this size even though it's hella inconvenient especially doing junk journaling because it's not just a simple case of printing a piece of paper folding it in half and boom it fits your journal no you've got to work out how you're going to fit it and whether you're going to cut a bit off or whether you're going to turn it over yeah are you going to have bits that fold in or whatever because it's too wide for the book that you're using and are you going to fold it in half or are you going to fold it off center <laughs> it makes life really difficult if i could just use an a5 i'd be fine you know but i don't like a5 i don't know there's just something about this size that feels right to me I love this A5 Slim is is my jam. Maybe it's just because I used moleskin notebooks for so long. I always come back to my moleskin size, always. 
And if these sketchbooks that I buy are A5 size, and the first thing I do is chop them off to moleskin size, the minute I get them. It's like letter size, yeah. Letter size folded in half isn't A5, and it's a problem. Exactly. Exactly. I have the same problem sometimes with, like, um, on Pixabay, when you're printing things out. Most designers do it according to screen size or vector image. So it will resize according to what paper you're using. But an awful lot of them do it in letter size. And then if you print it on A4, everything looks like... <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. But yeah, I like this A6 size. Uh, B6 size, sorry. I've wanted to use the B6 size for a while. And like this, it feels right. It feels good. I actually think if it, if I'd kept it thicker, it would have been a bit more difficult because my t small hands, I wouldn't have been able to, to grip it properly. But this feels nice. Um, the pen holder is a Leuchtturm pen holder. But instead of sticking it onto the back of the book, I used a bit of duct tape to stick it onto the back of the book. That way, when I want to swap to a new book... This is really, really well set in there. It's not coming off anytime soon. But when I want to swap it to another book, all I've got to do is slice around it and pull it off. It's not actually stuck. It's stuck under the duct tape. And then all I've got to do is take off the duct tape and I can stick it on the next book. So it makes these reusable. Um, I've got one in my journal as well, actually. Somewhere. But that one's stuck on with washi tape because it's on the leather. So every every so often I have to I have to take this off and it's starting to curl up now because it's on leather and it's washi tape. So it's starting to lift. Um, but I just, you know, take the washi tape off and restick it every two or three months. It's much better than ruining your leather or not being able to reuse really your bookmark. Although this bookmark, to be honest, I probably should just buy a navy blue one and stick it on the damn thing. <laughs> Portugal. Hello, Portugal. Don't have many Portuguese people dropping by. That's nice. Hello. Uh, Paula. Are you Paula from class, or are you a different Paula? Because we've got another. Di we've got another Paula, but I thought she was from Brazil, and she speaks Portuguese. Or Spanish. <laughs> Chloe. Yeah. Portugal! <laughs> Belgium, Virginia. I live in Hobbit country. It's like bang in the middle of the UK. It's not you. No. I didn't think it was. I think she speaks Spanish actually, not Portuguese. I think I couldn't decide if she was Portuguese or Spanish. Because I, I just know that the two languages look very similar to me because I don't speak either of them. So I, I think I couldn't rem I couldn't work out if she was Portuguese or Spanish. I know she's from Brazil, though, so. Right. It's only a short one today, but... I suppose I could show you where I'm up to with April's book. We're actually doing this in class as a full project. Uh, literally putting it together from scratch. I've shown them everything from how I decided what papers to use and all sorts. Uh, and we're doing it in stages, so it's nowhere near a full book yet. Um, but this is where I'm up to with it. I've got a few... These are all my offcuts. As you can see, I've got a lot more offcuts with this one than I have with the other one, because that one's already... I've already decided what to do with the offcuts. This one I'm only at the stage where I've put the papers in. Uh, but this is the vintage steampunk one. And all of the white papers in this, um, because they wanted to do vintage, steam, vintage Victorian aged paper type stuff, uh, and I don't do shabby chic, I decided to go with Victorian steampunk. Because that means I can use coffee dyed papers and brown and I can deal with it because <laughs> it's steampunk. Oh, no pink. Yay. 
Uh, but all of these white papers will be coffee dyed. Uh, this is coffee dyed rice paper. These prints are all off Pixabay. And I've gone for, oh, I've got it upside down. Hang on. Have I got it upside down? Or is that page? No, I've got it upside down. Hang on. Belay that. Belay that. <laughs> so, oh yeah, this is all my bits. Oh, I see. All my bits fell out of there. So this is Steampunk Spells. Again, it's blue and brown paper and orange. So blue, brown, orange, black, and um, this kind of stuff. Uh, so that, that was the colour scheme I went with. Um, brown with bits of blue. So she's from the steampunk spells. That's the flying lady. And that's the fold out from it. But I didn't want to cut it off. I thought it looked weird. But it doesn't look so weird if it's got that on the back. So this is a pocket. There's my April thing to put my index card in. Oh, me and words. Calendars and tasks, appointments page, uh, coffee dyed rice paper. Uh, and all of this will be coffee dyed before I write on it. Uh, another page from that. Um, oh, New York book that I keep pulling apart. Uh, this is actually beige lace. I've got a lot of beige and nude lace. Um, and this is a pocket because this didn't fit the same width so I stuck a bit of lace on and then I thought well instead of sticking these down because I didn't like the two pages on the back I'll make it a pocket and then I can use it or I can not use it depending on whether I need it or not I've put an extra piece in there this is coffee dyed paper this is going to be my astrology page so I just added this bit because I don't want to have to write over that pair of compasses there. I didn't realise that the two compasses and the two ships were together until after I flipped through it for about the ninth time. Um, I've got another piece of paper to go in here. What I've done is I've reprinted. I didn't have enough blue so I've reprinted some of these in blue instead of brown. This is the same as that green paper in my Victorian one. This is just one off Pixabay. There's a whole series of these off Pixabay. It's the same artist. I've bought him about six cups of coffee now because I keep printing his stuff. Another uh, fold up from Graphics Fairy. This will be coffee dyed. Uh, I've printed a couple of these in blue as well and one of these will get swapped out because there was a bit too much yellow and brown so I'm going to I'm going to swap a couple out in for blue. So this is what this paper looks like when it's coffee dyed. And because it's cartridge paper, it doesn't spoil the integrity of the paper. So you can see the paper is, this, this paper is still perfectly usable. Uh, you can still watercolour on this and everything. Can we have your Insta so we can all be friends? Uh, it's there. Second row down. At Romany on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, I'm Romany's Realm. My website is Romany's Realm. I've already done my bullet journal, yes. Um, but you can, you'll be able to watch that again in a minute. I've done my January, February, quick look. I've done my March one. I've done my bullet journal. And then this is the one that we're doing in class for April. So this paper, all this white paper will be like this which blends beautifully with the colours in the book. It really does look good. Got a couple of odd bits and pieces. That side doesn't match, but this side does. I kind of like the time flies tick tock with the caged bird. Got some, this is a printout from a commonplace book. And I printed, I printed the pages out so that they looked like pages from another book got this new hair colour. Gosh, Amy, where have you been? I did this in uh, beginning of December. I went white. It's growing out. Look how much it's grown out. <laughs> I'm going to go and do my roots. That's my job for tonight. 
Um, I got Vintage Voyage one with the another steampunk lady on the back that's more of a journaling card. Uh, I've got the clocks on that one. Coffee dyed paper. This will be coffee dyed. These, I some of them I cut off and some of them I folded in. More plain paper. The other half of the dictionary page. Some more steampunk paper. Colour. Uh, this one is the other half of that written page. Um, but I like this at the back because with so many plain pages at the back, if I don't want to do anything to this page, I don't have to. It looks like it's already decorated. Uh, these are the two ships. Uh, and the way I the way I cut these actually looks like a waterfall. I'm kind of liking it. That's why I've got this stuck in the back, because I'm thinking maybe I'll do that as a fold-out. So that it folds together, uh, and it's like a gatefold, and then when you open it up, you've got the waterfall effect in the middle. I haven't figured out how, quite how to do it yet, though. But I like this peekaboo effect with the blue. The rice paper again, sketch paper, and that big piece at the back. Those pieces should be in there. See, I've got a spare bit of white paper that I can add. Um, this is nowhere near, anywhere near as complete as the one for March. Because obviously March is today, March has to be ready to go or ready to use. This I literally have only got as far as getting the papers roughly in order to the point where I now know that I need more blue and therefore I've printed some more blue bits. That's as far as we've got with that. This is nowhere near done. So, but we're doing it in bits through the class. So we're going to be adding like pockets and stuff and making bits of ephemera to use in it and then adding them to the pages to use wherever rather than pre-making the book. So if we make pockets and stuff, we'll just clip them where we think we want to use them, but they won't be attached to the book or part of the book until we've actually get to that page and we decide if we actually want to use it there or not. I think that's how it's going to work for me anyway uh, because I'm not a pre-made book kind of girl if I want to decorate I want to decorate myself but the actual background pages it's not enough to have all the white pages that didn't really work for January so yeah I hope that kind of makes sense it doesn't really make sense to me how it works but I'm feeling confident about my Victorian journal for March and I'm going to go and set up some bits in it this evening. Tonight is pizza and scary movie night so I'm going to sit and work in my journal, update my index, get my March bullet journal set up and then be able to take the weekend. Apart from class tomorrow I can take the weekend and say right I'm not doing anything for the weekend. I have a weekend off to play with my iPad. Oh, I also found this. Look at this paper. Isn't that cool? Scrapbook paper. It's quite thick. It's plain on the other side. It's um, paper loft. But it's rivet. Riveted metal. How cool would that be? To use in that steampunk journal. I was thinking I could take this bit out and use it as a fold up page. It is Rosie Riveter, yeah. Very steampunk. Um, these bits could be taken out to use them as pockets or booklet covers or whatever. These could be journaling cards. You know, there's all sorts I can do with this one piece of paper. It's just a standard 12 by 12 piece of paper, but I love how it looks shiny. It's, it, it really does look metallic and yet it's not a picture. It's not a photograph, it's digital. So, yeah, I'm going to be using that in my steampunk journal. Uh, I have had a couple of questions about my classes. People are still 
a bit confused. I, I mentioned my class. People say, you're not on Patreon anymore. People see my Patreon. They say, I'm confused. Where are your classes? It's all the same thing. Okay. My class is a monthly class or year. It runs all year. When Frogs Sing, it's been running since 2013, January 2013 it started. Um, and it's been running ever since. So you can do the whole year when Frogs Sing 2019, or you can start now and do a month, three months, five months, however long you want to do. You can also pay on Patreon. That's the difference. So you can... You can, uh, sorry, I saw the question. I was like, kitty in profile? What? What? Me? I have a kitty in my profile, yeah. I have a cat, my black and white cat going like that. Um, I can't change it. Bear died like six years ago and I can't change the picture. <laughs> I don't know why I can't change the picture, but I can't change the picture. Um, yeah, to do the class, the class is hosted on my Ning site. You can pay on my Ning site. You can pay for one month, three months, five months, six months, a year, whatever. I don't, whatever you like. Um, if you need to pay weekly, you can. But if you want to pay on Patreon because you support other patrons and that's easier for you, you can pay on Patreon and join the Ning site and I will manually add you to the class. OK, that's the only difference. It's not a different class. It's not. It's all the same stuff, but it's all on Ning now. But you have the option to pay on either Patreon or Ning. The big difference is with with Patreon, you're charged on the first of the month every month. And if you support other creators, it's a lot easier. If you're not already on Patreon, there's no need to join Patreon. You can just come and pay on Ning. You can pay on the first of the month. You can pay on the seventh of the month. You can pay on the 19th of the month. I don't care. Pick a date. <laughs> you can use PayPal or Stripe, which is good for the European guys because most of Europe uses Stripe rather than PayPal. Um, so you can, you can pick and choose. And if you have any issues whatsoever, just email me or email KK on admin. So romanysrealm at gmail.com or romany at gmail.com. Just drop by and ask. The site is also free. You can't get into the class for free, obviously. But there is free stuff on the class, on this class site. There is forums. There is journaling prompts. There's all sorts of things. So if you want to come over and hang out, even if you don't want to do the class, you're welcome to do that too. OK, hopefully that is a bit clearer. I think maybe I need to put this on the Ning and Patreon sites. I thought I had and I thought it was clear, but I don't know. In, I think a lot of people think Patreon and classes are not the same, but I ran my classes on Patreon. I've been running my classes for years. I just moved them to Patreon and then moved them off because Patreon's a pain in the arse between you and me and all of YouTube. Patreon is a pain in the arse. Five days it took them to process payments last month. Five days. I've never seen anything like it. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. They kind of annoy me. They're the only company I know that doesn't have the ability to pro process payments on time. And they never seem to be able... To, this month, they are estimating that everything will be finished by March the 2nd. But they can't guarantee that. It's like... How many other companies do you know in the entire world that pay you when it's finished processing? <laughs> anyway. It's all right if your Patreon is just a, a second income or a donation income, like a lot of things it is, you know, people who've got podcasts. Oh, the US government pay you when they feel like it. That's a completely different thing. Uh, but, yeah, I think most people are on Patreon. 
it's a supplemental rather than, you know, most of my income comes from my classes. So I can't afford to be waiting around for Patreon to pay me in somewhere between three and five days time, depending, because I've got direct debits that go out on the first and people get annoyed if you don't pay them. <laughs> Couldn't find the butt from a hole in the ground. Couldn't find their bum with both hands and a map, as my dad would say. <laughs> anyway, it's Friday. Let's go home early. Um. Oh, do you want to see what I did on... These are from Twitch this morning, if you missed it. So this one is Yin Yang. These are both work in progress. Neither of them have anywhere near finished. This is Yin Yang, which is a work in progress, obviously. And this is I Know Kung Fu. And if you were not on Twitch and you know where that reference comes from, you're cool. <laughs> uh, both of these are reserved already. They're not even finished yet. And they're already spoken for, so... Sorry! Uh, but if you want to re-watch the um, painting of them, pop over to Twitch. The re-watch is over on there. Uh, the... Yeah, his eyes are really good. I'm, I'm enjoying his eyes. His eyes look... They're not finished yet, but they look... It took a long time to get them right. A long time. And we discovered an anomaly. Here you go. Friday's useless fact. Price, Friday's useless fact with Romany. Look at this. A panda's eyes, if you look at them up close, hang on. You ready? Let's use, uh, let's just use that so I can focus it in. Okay. You ready for this? weirdness. A panda's eyes zoomed in looks like a horse. But it's not a horse face in the front. No, it's a horse face in that way. Panda's nose is here. Horse's nose is over there. Looks like a horse. Isn't that weird? And I also discovered if you turn them upside down, they look like a guinea pig. <laughs> Panda eyes. Weird. So there's your useless fact for the day from me. Uh, have a good weekend and I will see you all again next week. Bye.